one is endowed. Such as these do not predict to women or men these will have a son or daughter. Such faulty ways of making oneself acceptable will not be this one's. All this is another token of irreversibility. So now, Subhuti, I'll indicate the attributes, tokens and signs of an irreversible bodhisattva. Endowed with these one is known as irreversible from full enlightenment. Again, which are these? The following, one does not give oneself over to occupation and preoccupation with the skandhas, the sense fields, the elements, and with conditioned co-production. One is not preoccupied with the kind of talk a person is fond of in society, with talk about kings and robbers, about armies and battles, about villages, cities, market towns, countries, kingdoms, and capitals, about oneself, about ministers and prime ministers, about women, men and neuters, about journeys, parks, monasteries, palaces, pools, lakes, ponds, lotus ponds, woods, gardens and mountains, about yakshas. Rakshasas, Pritas, Pishakas, Kataputana demons and Kambanda demons, about food, drink, dresses, ornaments, perfumes, garlands and ointments, about roads, crossroads, streets, markets, palanquins and people, about songs, dances, tales, actors, dancers, and wandering singers, about the ocean, about rivers, about islands. These do not devote themselves to talk which obstructs dharma, to the kind of talk which delights the common people, but to talk on perfection of wisdom, and these are people who do not lack in mental activities which are associated with all knowledge. But talk about fightings and strife, about quarrels and disputes these avoid. These are willing for what is right, and not willing for what is wrong. These praise without causing dissension, and not in order to cause dissension. These want friendship, and not its opposite. These speak Dharma, and not its opposite. These plan to gain a vision of Tathagatas which dwell in other world systems, and thus these increasingly produce thoughts which lead to their presence. According to plan these are come near them, and so these do not lack in the vision of Tathagatas, nor in opportunities for honoring and serving them. Furthermore, as an irreversible bodhisattva definitely terminated one's existence among the gods, whether these belong to the sphere of sense desire, or the sphere of form, or the formless sphere, dash one is turned over to just this middle region, in Jambadvipa. For in the border countries are only a few beings with a good knowledge of the arts, of poetry, of mantras, of secret law, of the standard treatises, of portents and of the meaning of religion, but in the middle region these are turned to abundance. But any who are turned over to the border regions these are at least revealed again in the big towns. This is another mark of irreversibility. Furthermore, to an irreversible bodhisattva it does not occur to ask oneself whether one is irreversible or not. No question about it arises, as one is not uncertain about the stage one made, and one does not sink down below such. Just as a stream winner has no hesitations or doubts about the fruit of a stream winner, if that is the stage which is this one's right, just so an irreversible bodhisattva neither questions nor doubts about being on this stage of a bodhisattva, as this stage is one's right stage, here is no uncertainties about this stage which is right, nor does one sink below such. And one quickly sees through any deed appearing as Mara's that may arise, and does not come under his sway. A person who commits one of the deadly sins never again, until one's death, loses this thought of this action, one cannot get rid of it or remove it, but it follows after one until the time of one's death. Just so this irreversible mind of an irreversible bodhisattva learns to stand firm on this irreversible stage which is one's right, and even this whole world, with its gods, beings and asuras, cannot deflect, divert or diverge such a one from this. One recognizes any deeds as being only seen to be of Mara which may arise, as these do, and does not come under their sway. One such as this is free from hesitations and doubts about this stage which any can realize, even after one passes through this present life the thoughts which are characteristics of disciples and Pratika Buddhas do not arise in being such as this. As one passes through this present life one thinks, here is not a case in which any shall not realize full enlightenment. Anyone is sure to realize full enlightenment, I stand firm on this stage which also I realize as such. One can no longer be led astray by others, and on the stage which is anyone's by nature, one can neither be crushed nor inflated, if one in one's nature adheres to the principle of suchness in an as all, and beyond even such, as such is. For, as one stands firm on this, one's mind is insuperable, one's cognition is insuperable. Suppose Mara, the evil one, in the guise of Buddha himself were to come to this one, and say, realize arhatship in this very life. You are not predestined to full enlightenment. 
You have not the attributes, tokens and signs with which a bodhisattva must be endowed in order to realize full enlightenment. Why now do you course in this? If the bodhisattva now experiences a change of heart, one can know one is not predicted to full enlightenment by the Tathagatas of the past. On the other hand, as one considers, I see this, surely, as Mara, the evil one, who comes along after he by magical means, adopts the disguise of the Buddha, as all are beset by Mara, this is but one of Mara's magical creations, but certainly not Tathagata. A Tathagata speaks to the effect as one not realizing only Arhatship, and not otherwise, as one sees and understands I see this, surely, is as Mara, the evil one, who is manufacturing a magical double of the appearance of the Buddha, and who wants to estrange any and all beings from supreme enlightenment, and now at this Mara turns back, this Bodhisattva certainly in the past is predicted to full enlightenment by the Tathagatas, and stands firmly in this irreversible Bodhisattva stage. Where these attributes, tokens, and signs are found as a bodhisattva, here one can be certain, beyond any shadow or doubt of this, as one exudes these qualities, so this one is predicted by Tathagatas in the past, and stands firm on this irreversible bodhisattva stage and as one exudes such attributes, tokens and signs of an irreversible bodhisattva this is another token of irreversibility. In addition to this, an irreversible bodhisattva gains this good dharma even as this costs one one's life and any belongings. Here one makes a supreme effort to gain this good dharma, through affection and respect for Buddhas and lords, past, future and present. In one's firm conviction, the dharma bodies are Buddhas and lords, one realizes this good dharma not only of the past Buddhas and lords, but also of the present and future Buddhas and lords. One is convinced as one also is within the ranks of these which are reckoned as future Buddhas and lords, as one also is predicted to this supreme enlightenment, also one is known as already having gained this good dharma. So, these considerations one bears in mind as, in one's efforts to gain this good dharma, one renounces even one's life and one's belongings, as one does not lose heart, nor become indolent. This is another token of irreversibility. Moreover, as Tathagata demonstrates dharma, an irreversible neither hesitates nor doubts. Subhuti, does one also neither hesitate nor doubt when a disciple demonstrates dharma? The Lord, no, such a one does not. For a bodhisattva which acquires this patient acceptance of dharmas which fail to produce, or be productive or produced, neither hesitates nor doubts as one hears about this unobstructed true nature of all dharmas. Endowed with these virtues a bodhisattva is irreversible. These also are known as the exudation of attributes, tokens and signs of a bodhisattva which is irreversible from full enlightenment. End chapter 17